Hey gang, RJ Helms here, and we're back for the third episode of our Let's Play of Open TTD. Uh, just to recap, in the last episode we had built uh, this airport and added it to our airline connecting these two cities for the purpose of building a rail system, which we just started. So it starts in this uh, ABG station and just goes down to Dostehafen here to DHF. So one thing first, before I get into playing here, I realized after I recorded the last video and uploaded it, they actually do still have some settings that are incorrect. I had missed them uh, in the first video when I was setting everything up. These are things that I usually just set for the um, uh, globally and open TDD and then just have apply to every game, but since I'm on a, a new machine here, I obviously didn't set them up when I first installed it. So the first one I saw was if I go to the um, GRFs and the Aviate set here, it says, Warning, plane speed setting of 1 to 1 is recommended. And that means that if the, uh, in the default graphics or in the default plane set, uh, Planes are really overpowered, they just make way too much money, and so the game has a setting under vehicles here which is a uh, plane speed factor of one quarter, and that means that the listed speed of a plane, they'll actually travel at a quarter of that speed, and that's just because otherwise you'll make way, way too much money. Uh, the AV8 set is actually properly balanced for one to one, so I'm going to set that to one to one. Uh, that means that all the planes in the game are going to start traveling at four times the speed, so of course we're going to have to. Uh, fix our timetables. When I was in here, I also realized I had the same problem with the uh, acceleration models, the train acceleration and road vehicle acceleration models. These I want both set to realistic. And that means that the actual power and tractive effort of the vehicles uh, will determine how fast they go. And so, actually, in the second episode, you saw that when, the, uh, when this train left the station, pulling around these bends and um, and climbing up that hill, it just lost all its speed right away, and that's not realistic. You can see here, if we watch this, it's going to... Um, handle these corners quite a bit better, but at the same time, the acceleration is going to reflect more accurately the lack of power that this uh, engine actually has. And that's what we want to see, so that actually makes it a lot more realistic, like the name says, and means that we'll be able to uh, more meaningfully optimize our system for speed when the time comes. Uh, unfortunately, the downside of that means that these timetables that I've put in are actually no longer accurate. So I'm going to clear this one and autofill, and I'm going to have to do the same thing with the planes. And these times will actually become more realistic for the speed that the vehicle actually goes at. We will see the same problem with the buses, because I've changed their acceleration model, but I don't think that's so critical. I'm not going to worry about them uh, until they start running very late, if that does happen. We can see that, of course, if I go to um, sort by timetable delay. I'm just going to periodically want to check on what the slowest or the latest vehicle is, and just see if it actually starts having a huge problem. But I don't think it will. I'll just watch this one to see. No, so that's fine. I'm just going to wait to let these vehicles um, update their timetables. While we're waiting, we can look at starting handling some of our road vehicle capacity. You can see we do have a number of routes that are underserviced. This appears to be the worst one. So before we start expanding our rail system, let's let's sort that out. Just wondering if there's a better bus available yet. It doesn't look like it. It's still just the four. Or so. Vehicle should be good on that route. I need to manage one more on this route. And let's try one more on this route. Are any of the ones up here in need of more vehicles? It doesn't look like it, so that's fine. So 
So I'll wait for these timetables to update and for this to take effect. You can see here this is traveling much faster, and this looks like it's the same as well. So with the realistic model, even though this train probably will never actually get up to its full speed, um, out of the stations and around corners it goes a lot faster, and that's, um, like the name says, the realistic model. Trains accelerate and decelerate a little bit slower. You can see it. Also, the, the effect of slopes is more realistic, so that gained a lot of speed going down that slope, and the same thing, it'll lose a lot of speed going up the slope, unless, of course, the uh, locomotive is powerful enough, which this one isn't. So this time the table's ready, I'm going to add some slack to it. It looks like this isn't working too well because I've got these two vehicles just waiting here. They're running way too early, so I'm going to reset their late counters just so that they leave, and hopefully that will let this one come out of the depot. And now it's going to start filling in the timetable. As you can see here, they're already going so much faster than they were before, and that's perfect. So let's just leave that go. I'm fairly certain I will need to upgrade these airports as well. But that's the name of the game. So the next thing to do is to expand this, um, this train line. It looks like it's going to need another vehicle, but we'll wait a while before we do that. Let's get the... Uh, the system expanded a bit first. So I was looking and I think that uh, Tauberheim here is a good next destination. So I'll pull it down. I think I will stop in this town as well, Havelstedt, and then that'll be a nice four-line route and we should see a lot more volume showing up on this round network once that's built. So first we're in our stations. Again, remember to make sure you're using the electrified railway construction. I do want to pause here just because I normally don't bother with the exclusive use of uh, locomotives. That's just a habit I have from the um, game when breakdowns are enabled. Uh, these will have very low reliability when they first appear, and so it's not really worth your while to use an uh, exclusive use of a, of a vehicle. But since that's off, this is actually a great train. This is one that I think will form a lot of the backbone of our rail system. And so I'm going to accept this exclusive access now because I'm going to want to start putting these on this line as soon as possible. Leveling there to put this station down, and then same deal as before, we can disconnect them. Not gonna worry about too much about landscaping. With the realistic model, S curves like this tend not to uh, present a problem. It's, um, only actual turns, and even then, especially 90 degree turns, you need to work with the radius, so this isn't a problem. Once again, I could do some landscaping here, and I will eventually just take that hill out. Same with this one, but I'm not going to for now. I'm going to smooth that out. Oh, wrong way. There we go.
And then we just connect these up the exact same as we did the other stations. So at this point, because these stations are actually in the middle of the route, I could update their um, their platforms to start uh, using uh, one-way path signals to have one uh, platform reserved for each direction, but I'm not going to do that just yet, just because I think the flexibility at this point will be more valuable than the dedicated lines once the capacity builds up a bit further. Um, that will be a, quite a bit more important. I built that in the wrong direction. You can use the control click and drag to remove signals just like you can insert them. It does the exact same thing, it removes every signal until the next block. Alright, that's perfect. So now I need to update that trains route. Rename the group just to reflect the fact that it goes to new towns, so let's bring in these stations as well. So this can be H HBS. And this can be TBH. So this group is gonna be ABG to TBH now. I need to add the other stations. that and set the timetable to autofill. That time should be fine, it will eventually get overwritten as the timetable autofills, but I don't expect it to change. And we'll leave this up as well. So this timetable is ready, so let's start adding our slack to it and get it out of the way. This 42 days seems a bit high. I suspect it had to actually wait to land at ABG, so I'm not going to add any slack there. I'm going to add five days to each of these. Grab this one because it's just about to land to set our separation. And that should be a lot better. We should get much higher throughput with the same vehicles now that they're going four times as fast. So we can see our um, road vehicles sorted out the capacity problems in these three stations. I just want you to do the same thing in these two towns. This town's pretty rinky-dink. This one actually might want several stations in because it's pretty big. Let's see if I can cover the whole thing. Well, close enough to it. So one station there. One station there. Station down there should be perfect. It's a new bus, that's great. on that route. And down here, the same thing, give these meaningful names. So this will be TBH, let's call it East. TBH South. That's going to be TBH Central Share. And in this town, same as Nidish dot earlier, I'm 
just going to do the loop in one direction. Um, depending on the capacity, it could be more efficient to have it going in both directions, like a, a clockwise and a counterclockwise loop, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. If it ends up that vehicles going in one direction just can't meet the capacity, then that's something I can always do later. But for now, just a one-way loop like that. Get that timetable auto-filling. This one's ready, so let's add our slack to it. This vehicle, in addition to having higher capacity, is quite a bit faster, so... Eventually I might switch my whole system over to that. I also need groups for these, so local HVS needs road vehicle 16, and local TBH will take road vehicle 17. Not sure what this is doing, but looks like that timetable hasn't started recording yet, but that's fine. It should be starting this loop again. Maybe it waits till the beginning of the schedule before it starts filling it. I'm not certain, to be honest. As you can see here, this is already telling me I'm going to need a new vehicle on this leg. see here there's passengers to any station, that's because the the simulation hasn't calculated where they should go yet. So that'll build or get on any vehicle that stops there, and that's of course how this game works when you don't have cargo disk enabled. But we can see there's a good distribution, they're going to almost everywhere in the city, or everywhere on the map that I have a station to. Um, every town except ABG, which is interesting. Alright, this timetable is ready, so let's do our same bit of business. more slack than I need to these road vehicles, but that's better than the alternative. You can see here, this is starting to show demand along this line, and that's exactly what we want to see. All my other road lines are in good shape. So I will need another train along this line. So let's see how much cash I have available to me. I've got plenty at this point. See, money is starting to no longer be a problem. So I'm going to build one of those um, new vehicles, these aero trains. And this one's great because it's 120 passengers just in the train. You can see it's got four little cars on it. And if you build two back to back, I mean, it doesn't have a pretty high running cost, but this is very fast, it's very powerful, and it's a dedicated passenger vehicle. So I'm going to add one of those. I'm going to just clone the orders of this train and get it started. And I have to make sure I put it in the group manually as well. And so it's going to actually end up just getting stuck right behind this one because it's so much faster, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to want the timetable to reflect the slowest train on the line. I'd rather have a timetable for this train that this one always arrives very early for than have a timetable for this train that this one is just not able to stick to at all. You can do that with speed limits as well, actually force this train to only go as fast as that one, but I don't think I want to do that in this case. I will probably want even more trains on this line, but... I think for now we'll just see how it works with two. Same thing, I might want some more airplanes, but for now I'll leave that alone. Actually, I am going to add one more airplane to this route, see if there's a better one available. Um, if I sort by 
maximum speed, for example. So there's the de Havilland Comet, the Bristol Bertrania. I'll go for the Bristol Britannia. It seems like a good compromise of a higher speed, a higher capacity, but a equivalent running cost. Let's put that on this system. Add it to its route. And once again, this is going to go faster than the other planes, but the timetable will take care of that. It'll just wait longer at the uh, airports to reflect the fact that it's faster than all the others. Something to consider if I had um, breakdowns enabled is usually the aircraft type. There are small and large aircraft. They are all, I believe, small at this time. But if um, this is a small airport, and so a large airplane, once they start appearing, won't be able to actually land it. I mean, it can, but it does have, a, I think, a 5% chance of crashing when it tries. So that's obviously something we don't want. And so once again, if you're playing a game with, uh, with breakdowns or disasters enabled, you do want to be mindful of your airport size. So I can see right away I want at least one more vehicle on this route. Let's get that started. I mean, this station isn't proven to be particularly profitable, but that's fine. Um, as the town grows, this might start seeing more and more demand, but the, the real moneymaker is between these three stations. So as you can already see, I'm going to want one more turn on this line, so let's just create that, clone this one and get it started. I'll let that one pass first, just for good measure. And then this timetable will be ready, so actually what I'm going to do is uh, stop this one. And once the timetable is ready, I'll set my separation based on this one once it enters the station. All right, so the timetable is ready there, so let's add our slack. He's actually saying wait for six days, so I take that as a sign that I want them to wait for six days. As a minimum. Now let's add some slack to each of these. Go over two days once again. Get this guy out of the way, and then let's start this one and set our separation based on this station, this, this train. So start it in about a week's time, get it started. And I've got three trains running on this line. So let's pay off all our loan. You can see here we're starting to make a lot of money, even spending uh, almost 100,000 pounds on construction last year. We still made 100,000 pounds. And that's because you can see the Trains are starting to pull in a bit of money, but my, my road vehicles and my airplanes are are very good money makers right now, and that's exactly what we wanted to see from that system. So I think that's a good place as any to, uh, to call this a day for this episode, so thanks so much for watching, and thanks to everybody who checked out the first two episodes and, and liked them or subscribed or left comments, and please feel free to do the same thing again, any feedback is very welcome. Anything you want to see uh, more of or less of or any thoughts you have on how this game is going, I'd love to hear it. So I'll be back um, soon enough with an episode number four, but until then, uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you there. Thank you.